Good morning, Guardians. Briar Rabbit here. Today, we've got a lot to talk about, so buckle up, Beat Boys. This is going to be a long one. First of all, we're going to talk about the year to reveal. So Tuesday, that's this Tuesday coming up on June 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific, over on twitch.tv slash Bungie, Bungie is going to reveal year two of Destiny. So this is big news for Destiny fans. A lot of people are really looking at the Comet expansion, the year two expansion, uh, to fix a lot of the woes of Destiny 2 and also add some really cool new features, things like a brand new cooperative activity, you know, like that we've never seen in Destiny before. So hopefully... This will mark the end of Destiny 2 trying to catch up with Destiny 1 as far as features and playability goes and start moving Destiny 2 into the future and uncharted territory. Now, there is some stuff that is fairly interesting here. Basically, right off the bat, you can see the image seems to show the reef with these kind of rings around it. And I'll be honest with you, these rings immediately made me think of Stargate. Um, whether that means that they're a portal to another place or whether it's just a structure, a derelict structure in the reef and that the, the expansion will be mostly centered around the reef, that's really up for debate. I would love a really Fallen like centric DLC. I think the Fallen are one of the most interesting of all of the kind of races or enemies in Destiny 2. Uh, the fact that they so clear closely parallel uh, our struggle in our path uh, and that the Traveler left them behind uh, and they are kind of following the Traveler is very interesting to me and I'd love that story to be expanded upon. Now, there is a rumored leak. Uh, I don't know how valid this is. It comes from 4chan, and it is, I mean, who knows at this point. But, you know, I'm going to read it to you guys. I'm going to let you guys know what the rumored leak is. So, apparently, the expansion is going to be called Summoning of Nine and is going to be released on September 7th. The storyline will revolve around Aldrin resurfacing with an army of fallen soldiers to rescue his sister, the Queen, from the Nine. The Nine are forced to unleash the Nestoreth to stop Aldrin's army. The Nestoreth are a brand new enemy race of Void Demons. Nezarek is the former 10th member of the Nine who is banished for betraying his brethren. The expansion's new raid is called Tomb of Eternity and revolves around stopping Nezarek for good. The Nine are met during the expansion's campaign and help you stop Nezarek. There are 10 story missions and 4 strikes, 2 new destinations, the Reef and the Void, and brand new cooperative activity known as The Court. Details on this are scarce at the moment, but it's a brand new PvE activity new to the Destiny series, and the expansion is being officially revealed on Tuesday. So, again, this is all rumor. If it's true, it actually seems pretty exciting to me. Ten story missions, four strikes, that's not a ton. Two new destinations, that's cool. If it's... If one of those destinations is a social space, that's less exciting. The Reef was a social space in Destiny 1. The Void could be very cool because I believe, due to the lore, that's not inside our our galaxy. That's It's either outside our galaxy or outside kind of like the realm that we exist in or like an alternate universe. I, I don't know. I'm not a lore guy. But it could be really cool because if they do go kind of outside our galaxy, who knows what's possible. And that could mean that those those rings that are in that image that seems to me to be in the reef, maybe those are a portal to the void. That, that'd be a really cool thing. Getting a new race of enemies, the Nastareth, uh, led by Nezarek, which is a little bit uh, confusing, would be really great. It's definitely time for Destiny to start introducing new races, new enemies, that kind of thing, because frankly, we've been fighting the same types of enemies for about four years, and while Destiny 2 changed a lot of them up in subtle ways and added some some unique new enemies to some of the races, it's definitely, it'd be fun to get a brand new race instead of something like the Taken or Siva Fallen where, 
you know, they're, they're sort of a different take on familiar faces. So this is all rumor and speculation. We'll find out much more in less than a week. On June 5th, uh, we'll find out exactly what's going to be in the next expansion. And what I hope is that we also see a roadmap uh, at this reveal that tells us that along with an expansion in September, we'll also see a new DLC in December and another new DLC in the spring. Because if you remember, that's something that kind of fell apart with Destiny 1. The planned roadmap was very much like year one of Destiny 1 or like year one of Destiny 2 to have you know a big release in September and then two smaller releases kind of throughout the year. But they weren't really able to keep up with that pace and in came the live team with live events and stuff like that in year two. And we ended up getting in year two, one big expansion and no DLCs. And then in year three, one slightly smaller expansion and no DLCs, uh, just kind of augmented by the spring update. So it's very exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to June 5th for sure. But that's not all that we have to talk about today by a long shot. Also coming June 5th is some big changes to faction rallies. So faction rallies uh, really weren't well received, I'd say, by the community. They were a little bit boring. They didn't really seem to matter. There was no real connection to the faction because you could basically you could pledge allegiance to all three, one on each character. It never really felt like a meaningful choice. So they're making some big changes here. First of all, players may now only pledge to one faction per account during a faction rally event. One faction per account. That means that when you pledge allegiance to one of the factions, all three of your characters on that account pledge to that, to that faction as well. Also, reputation progress is retained through multiple events, and it will not be reset during the season, even if a player changes allegiance. Each faction offers unique rewards, such as exotic armor ornaments or masterwork catalysts for exotic weapons. They're also planning to host three faction rally events over the course of Season 3. So you will have an opportunity during Season 3 to pledge to all three factions, but when you do so, it'll be for all three of your characters for the entire rally, which is pretty cool. It's a big decision, right? Dead Orbit will offer Eye of Another World Ornament and the Graviton Lance Catalyst. New Monarchy will offer the Crest of Alpha Lupi Ornament and the Sweet Business Catalyst. Future War Cult will offer the Knucklehead Radar Ornament and the Sunshot Catalyst. I can't wait for the Sunshot Catalyst. It being kind of the only real hand cannon that's exotic right now, I'm hoping that that Catalyst is really going to up its its usability and potential in both the crucible and in PVE. Cause I love the sunshot, but it just feels, it feels a little weak compared to some of the more powerful exotics right now for, for the vendor progression, each faction now features ranks, which players can reach by earning faction tokens. So tokens are coming back, but the way you earn them is going to be a little bit different. Faction rank up rewards will continue to grant legendary armor and weapons past rank 30 and they actually showed off some of the weapons and some of the rewards and basically all of the armor from each of the factions that you'll be able to earn now faction rallies the way the way you earn tokens is going to be a little different they're introducing this new renown system so after pledging to a faction players may earn renown by completing a public event a patrol, or by defeating high-value targets on destinations. Now, players who loot a lost sector with Renown active will act will receive significantly more faction tokens than usual. The more stacks of Renown they have, the more faction tokens they earn. Renown is lost when players are defeated by enemies, so be careful when you're attempting to loot a lost sector with high Renown. Renown increases the level of challenge in the gameplay as well. Health regeneration is vastly reduced at all stack levels. Enemy kills have a chance to drop health orbs. Player damage decreases. It scales with the stack of your Renown up to 5. And incoming damage increases, which also scales with the attack up to 5. And while you have Renown on your player, 
you'll get kind of this animated aura on the back of your head neck area that shows other players around you which faction you've pledged to. It's a cool system. So what this system seems to do is stop players from just going into a lost sector and kind of finding a fast way to loop a grind. Um, maybe it's a bugged lost sector or whatever it happens to be. It's just basically just go in, kill the enemies, open the chest, go in, kill the enemies, open the chest. What, it, what it's encouraging you to do is go do other stuff like public events, patrols, or uh, defeating high value enemies, stack up your renown, then go into the lost sector. The lost sector is now going to be significantly more challenging. It's going to be like an actual high end activity, it seems like. And with that renown stacked, you'll get a much greater reward. Now, to me, the success of this system depends on how much better that reward is. Obviously, it's going to still be tokens. But it's going to have to be significantly more tokens with the more renown that you have. Because if it's faster for me to just grind lost sectors with no renown, because it's just easier to get through them and to open that chest, then that's how players are going to do it, right? So having renown, it needs to... It needs to be worthwhile. It needs to give you so many more faction tokens that it's it's worth the increased time it's going to take you to get through those lost sectors, as well as the risk of dying and losing that renown. So it's going to be an interesting balance. It's going to be interesting to see how they implement this and how much fun it actually is. Our lost sectors now going to become, with renown, a high-end PvE activity or an endgame activity. I certainly hope so, because that's something that I really like in Destiny, is something I really like about the Escalation Protocol, about raids, and what I used to like about Nightfalls, but now Nightfalls aren't very difficult, to be honest with you. Next up, Escalation Protocol. Escalation Protocol is getting a nerf. Uh, so basically, it's going to get easier. This is going to please a lot of people, because I've seen a lot... I know this because I've seen a lot of people complaining that it's just too difficult. It's too hard to do with a fire team of three. It's too hard to get you know more than three people in an instance. And really, it feels... It feels like it's a designed activity for nine people to at this point. A lot of people are like 370 ish light, 375. You know, maybe like the really most hardcore of players are at 380, 385. Um, and I think it's to me, this is a little bit unfortunate. Escalation Protocol with six or nine players is one of the most fun things in Destiny 2 right now. Having a huge fire team and just going ham in the Escalation Protocol is very interesting. It's as difficult as a raid with six players. Maybe not as difficult because you don't have to worry about you know the raid mechanics, but the actual the intensity of the activity is raid-like. It feels endgame, right? And the, the fact that they're actually reducing the power value of enemies. So what they're doing is uh, for waves basically four through seven, they're actually reducing the power levels of the enemies in those waves. Waves one and two are untouched, but three, four, five, six, and seven are all getting lowered in their power level a little bit. So uh, as opposed to wave six and seven being power level 400, they're now going to be power level 385. Wave 4 and 5 were power level 385, and now they're going to be 380. So it's a, it's a little bit of a change to make the Escalation Protocol easier. And my argument would be, I don't think we want it to be easier. I think we want it to be easier to get more people in there because it's so much fun <laughs> to get like a big fire team in. So you know, Bungie has co commented that it's either impossible or very, very, very difficult to change matchmaking for the Escalation product protocol in a way that, you know, makes it easy to bring six people into patrol, which is unfortunate because, you know, in Destiny 1, we had the Vault of Glass raid, which basically started off in patrol. You could bring six people into the Vault of Glass instance um, which was basically on Venus on patrol. And you'd actually be able to see other people who were on patrol. And if you were on patrol, you'd often go by the Vault of Glass and see people trying to open that door and be able to actually go in a system. So you might have, instead of a fire team of six trying to open the door for Vault of Glass, 
you might have seven or eight people there because two people were on patrol and just helping out. So if they had made escalation protocol kind of work more like that, I think it would have been a really great thing. And I think that if they decide, which they should, to continue on with escalation protocol type events, because I think this is a massive success, and I'd like to see them expand upon it and bring it into uh, other areas of Destiny, maybe put one on Earth, maybe put one in you know, the new areas that are coming in the expansion in fall. I think that Escalation Protocol is a huge success, but I would like them to make it an instance event where you could actually bring in a fire team of six and then keep the difficulty because the difficulty makes it an end game activity and a reason for you to grind for higher light level and better weapons and better armor. Whereas by just reducing the difficulty and trying to really cater to a three-man activity, people are still going to bypass the fact that it's catered to be a three-man activity. They're still going to bring in, they're still going to you know use, use matchmaking to kind of make a fire team of six happen or a fire team of nine happen. But the the activity is no longer going to be end game in that instance. If if you're trying to do it as a legit three-man team, I suspect it still will be very much an end game activity. Um, but it's just a it's a different of a difference of approach that it's just such a special activity in Destiny 2. It's a truly it feels like a truly new activity for Destiny, which is rare uh, right now. It also feels like end game activity, and I'm just worried that reducing the difficulty will it'll reduce the specialness of it, and n not having to get a huge fire team in there will reduce some of the fun. I, I would have rather seen instead of reducing the difficulty, uh, make it easier to get a bigger group into the event. I think that would have been a much better way of fixing the quote unquote problem. I'm a little disappointed about that. Hopefully they can fix that in the future because I think it's, it's worth it. The escalation protocol is a really good activity and it's worth kind of delving into and trying to improve the player experience for the future because it's just so special. So that's it. It's a pretty interesting week right now. Is It's a pretty interesting time to be a Destiny player. You know, Destiny, Bungie is clearly working very hard to make Destiny the game that their players want it to be. Uh, they're clearly listening to feedback. They're clearly doing a lot to really improve the Destiny 2 overall experience, whether that be the update to Faction Rallies, or that be the increase in communication that we've seen from Bungie over the last several months, or that be the power level of exotics and the grind for Catalyst, or just the difficulty of the game. The difficulty of Destiny 2 took a massive step up in Destiny 2, whether you're talking about the grind or her heroic strikes or escalation protocol. What they've created is a game that's a little bit harder, which makes the drive to grind for not only power levels, but also better weapons and gear much stronger, which is something that I think was sorely missing in Vanilla Destiny 2. So the game is getting better, and on June 5th, we've got two big things to be excited about, right? Is we're going to see the reveal for year two of Destiny. And whether that's going to be just about the September expansion, or if that's also going to outline the fact that there will be uh, further DLCs in year two past the expansion, I don't know. Whether that 4chan post is accurate or not, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's certainly interesting whether they treat the nine with the respect that the lore community of Destiny thinks it deserves, and even players of Trials of the Nine think it deserves. That's you know, that's a big question. Uh, but you know, if if there is a new race in Destiny Two, I think that'd be really exciting. Uh, if we do get to go and explore the void in like a patrol area, oh my God, that would be dope. So, you know, it's a it's a rumor. It's who knows if it's true. If it is true, it's pretty exciting. If it's not true, on June 5th, we'll find something else out that's going to be pretty exciting, I assume. And I got to say, I am really looking forward to find out what this new game mode is going to be, That this new PvE game mode that is brand new to Destiny. That, to me, is also very exciting because what I want from Destiny 2 at this point is to stop playing catch-up to Destiny 1 and start moving the series forward. Start 
start exploring things that have never been explored in Destiny. Start giving me new activities that aren't repeats of Destiny 1. And I think, you know, with something like the Faction Rally, we're definitely moving in that direction. Something like a brand new activity, Escalation Protocol, you know, these things are moving in that direction. And I hope to see it continue in that direction in year two, because if the game doesn't evolve, it's going to become very stale and very stagnant very quickly. So hopefully that is the path forward. Again, Escalation Protocol, like I'm very torn on, like I understand why they made it easier because it just wasn't, it wasn't doable. It, it feasibly doable for a fire team of three. It was hardly doable for a higher team of six, but I, I think the, I think what they're doing here is they're they're nerfing something that is very special in the the actual fix for the problem could have made the the event more fun by giving us a way to get more people in there easier would have been more fun maybe that's matchmaking for a specific event or maybe it's just allowing six man patrols or whatever, however they tackle that problem. I think it could have been it could have been handled in a way that really caters to how difficult it was and how fun it was with a group of people, as opposed to just making it easier for three people. If that was impossible or too difficult to implement now, then hopefully they can implement that in the future and continue on with the escalation protocols uh, in the future. I'd like to see them expand upon uh, the Escalation Protocol, because I think it's a really fun event in Destiny 2, and I don't want to see it go away. So that's what I think. I'd love to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think about the uh, Season 2 announcement? What do you think about the 4chan rumor of what's going to be in it? What do you think about the Escalation Protocol nerf? What do you what do you think about the lowering of difficulty? I know a lot of people are going to be pleased about this. Uh, it's just, and I may have just a completely unpopular opinion here, uh, but I would like to hear what you guys think about it because, you know, maybe I'm just way off base. Maybe it's just, you guys would just prefer it's a three-man activity and it's completable by a three-man fire team and that's it's just said and done. I just see something so special in making this a six or nine man activity and Bungie allowing us to do that with their in-game tools. It could be really an amazing thing. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.